Hello, and welcome back to Parenting Autism. Hello. How are you? We always start the same way, don't we? I know. You want me we to be a little more creative? Next time. All right, next time I'll be really creative. If you tune in next time, <laughs> buckle up, because I'm going to come up with something different. But hey, it's it's Friday here in our house, and <clears throat> pretty happy about that. And uh, we are just going to talk about maybe some highlights of the week. I always look for headlines. What were the headlines of the past week? And nothing too major, but definitely there's always developments and things going on in our world, always. especially with Bryce. But all good things, um, but definitely some challenges here and there, and we're just you know tackling them one at a time. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm still well. I'm, <laughs> I know, I'm not right? Sick, so that's it's a wonderful feeling. I just, I forgot what it felt like. Yeah, that's good stuff. So hey, I, the topics I had written down for today were going to be about um, emotional regulation as we're trying to teach Bryce emotions. We can see he's starting to pick up on that a little bit. I wanted to touch on one of the highlights we're working on now with him is personal space and for him to mm -hmm. understand that yes that uh, has been an issue yes um another thing i wanted to talk about today would be just kind of like his sensory input with his hands and why he's always chewing on them or chewing on something that sort of thing just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that i think we should also mention the new website yes we'll mention the new website <laughs> okay we'll mention that and we'll talk about uh Dairy, going yeah. dairy-free, and you know, yep. how that's going, uh, changing our water system, and the brain predictability. So we got several topics to cover today, but I think we'll start with, um, talk about the emotions. Drum roll, please. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Okay. So I, I wanted to talk about this because I know that with all of us, but Bryce especially, he he has some trouble like regulating his emotions. That's what we hear from the professional field. Those are some of the reasons why he does the self-stimulating behaviors that he does. It's, uh, you know, I know one of the reasons why we had him in occupational therapy from the physical standpoint was to help to get his emotions regulated, to get his body and his mind regulated. Can't say that I understand all of that because it's still kind of complex for me. Mm -hmm. But where I'm coming from is... I want him to understand emotions because it's pretty common that uh, our kids and even adults who are on the spectrum don't read body language. They can't read somebody's face necessarily and know what they're feeling. So they miss cues and then they may behave in a way that seems rude or inappropriate or insensitive when in fact, they just didn't understand what that person was thinking or feeling. And I'm not even sure that they understand how they are thinking and feeling, which can lead to some frustrations, too. So I've seen this past week two specific times that Bryce expressed what he was doing and tying it to an emotion. And so the first one was when he went to timeout last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as you know, uh, he has this horrible horrible reaction when we say keywords that he doesn't like that he screams them at the top of his lung and i will not <laughs> demonstrate for the sake of the listeners but it's horrible and it's like a single word if you say bedtime then he is going to scream that word at the top of his lungs yes. uh you know there, there's a few trigger words that we try to now use substitutes to, <laughs> <avoid> <laughs> to get around that, <laughs> to get around that <laughs> reaction <laughs> but the other night you know there was one that came out and i and we're just not gonna accept that because he that is beyond autism that is just you need to learn how to adjust and he knows that he's screaming and that it's not okay so anyway he got the time out and uh, i had put him i had sold him two minutes on the timer it's never extreme well then he was so upset he needed to hit the wall because mm. his little hand comes out and like what, what can i do i have to do something so he taps the wall which is his you know a hit so then i'm like two more minutes you know, and I think he did something else. He screamed like a little bit and you're like another minute. So anyway, we got up to six minutes. So it's ticking down and then he's just like, it's taking a long time. Yeah. Well, that's because you were screaming and you did other things. And then he had the tears pouring down and then he looked at me and he says, I am crying. Bryce is crying. Yeah. Which was 
good in my mind that, yes, you recognize this. And so then I reiterated to him, you're crying because you're sad and you're sad because you're in timeout and you're in timeout because you were mad and you screamed at mommy and daddy and you cannot scream. That is not nice. So, you know, he's thinking on that. And I think he even said, I'm sorry before it expired. And we said, that's great. We're glad that you said you're sorry for what you did, but you still have to stay in your chair until the time is up. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for saying that you're sorry. So I felt like he was getting it. And that's huge. I mean, that really is huge. So he understood all of that. We had a chance to explain to him how he was feeling two different emotions, and he could see it and feel it with his tears. So then this one is uh, like kind of the opposite, because instead of crying, he was laughing. And so then the other night when we were um, laying in bed, and I don't know if we were tickling him or what we were doing, but all of a sudden he's laughing, and then he says... Fake laugh. Well, first it was the real one. Yeah. And then he says, I am laughing. And then yeah. we're like, we looked at each other like, yes, yes, you are laughing. And then he got the fake laugh. Yeah. Go ahead, do his fake laugh. I can't do his fake <laughs> laugh, but it was funny. It was funny. He's like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Then he's like, I am laughing. <laughs> then I've been telling him lately, because he makes me laugh a lot. Yeah. And I said, you make me laugh. You are funny. Because I want him to know he's funny, you know. Yeah. But then we were telling him, you're laughing because you're happy. When you're happy, you know, you're laughing. So it was really cute. Like, he identified it all on his own that he was laughing. And then he tried to fake laugh so that he could say again that he was laughing, right. which was really cute. Yeah. But I do think that, you know, the more we can help him understand emotions it's going to help him interact with his peers and with adults which is really what we're um, going toward and so I I got this list here when we went to the talk list and they kind of had like the six core and yeah. it was anger disgust sad fear surprise and happy and then those were the six core emotions that they listed. And then they kind of have this whole thing where there's more emotions beyond that with different descriptions. And I, I think, I don't know how much we need to teach him about disgust. I know we tell him when he passes gas at night, it's disgusting. <laughs> And he thinks it's funny. <laughs> he does think that's funny, but he gets it. Like we do tell him certain things are disgusting. Mm -hmm. That would be one of them. Among other things, fear I think we say more, are you scared? I don't use the word fear with him, but, you know, are you scared of something? And I do want him to understand that. Surprise kind of goes with excited. Um, so, you know, we try to tell him that he's excited about, are you excited? You know, we usually, usually will say that word to him. And then, obviously, we see that he's excited when he's jumping up and down. So I think when we see him like that, we say to him, are you excited? But maybe we should say it more like, you're excited, like tell him you're excited because you're jumping up and down or right. whatever we're seeing that's causing that emotion instead of just asking him the question for a poss possible yes or no if and, he gets and it. And also to tell him how to say it too, you, you know, say I am excited. Right. You know, and then. You yeah. Know, yeah. So I, I think those are just <clears throat> like the emotions that I want to work with. And I wanted to share that because I know there are some parents that may be listening that maybe they're having those same struggles with their kids and i think it's one of those things that if you have a typically developing child you just kind of assume they're going to figure all that out because they do i mean i, I figured out i was laughing without my mom having to tell me i was yeah, laughing it was easier for us to figure out what emotions were for sure and and kids on the spectrum they they really have a hard time with uh, deciphering emotions. Yeah, so I just thought we'd bring that up. Is that something that we're working on presently with Bryce at this age and working with him on the emotions? You know what? I'm going to roll into that with uh, some notes from the card conference yeah. because it does address emotions also. Okay, great. So uh, this was from a keynote speaker. I wrote down Peter from Belgium. Sorry, I forgot what his last name was, but... Um, uh, he has a book out, and um, so he was talking about what was in his book. And he said that our brains make smart guesses to predict things. So, like, um, 
our brains are f- more familiar with our surroundings. So when we go through a door, we can kind of already predict what's going to be behind the door. And so our brain asks for sensory feedback to confirm those predictions, you know, so we open the door, we get feedback from our eyes. Yes, you know, it's something predictable. Uh, then there's very low sensory input to our brains based on our prior experience of coming through that same door. So um, then the brain will ask the senses for more input when it's not sure what is going on. So if you haven't been through that door before, you might tap in your smell or your ears to help identify what's going on. So um, ASD, he says, can be defined as difficulties in predicting the world. Uh, They can't predict what will be in a room. Uh, He's saying it's mostly like a surprise to them or they make two specific predictions and they notice one thing being out of place and they have a problem with that. So um, they don't have the concept of putting things into context. Uh, They can't predict if or when a crowd of people will clap. Uh, autism is absolutely absolute thinking in a relative world. So, for example, um, they're taught to stop when a light turns red, but that's not always the case. If you're in a crosswalk and the hand starts blinking red, they have to think they think that they have to stop in the middle of the crosswalk because they see a red light. So, you know, we can't tickle ourselves because our brain predicts it you know so he says don't change the stimulus change the prediction so giving kids headphones and sunglasses only weakens their sensory system over time and he thinks it's counterproductive so that's that's his opinion in his book so i know some kids use headphones and sunglasses like even bryce recently has been talking about how lights bother his eyes and sometimes the sun is bright. Um, so we'll give him sunglasses to wear, but um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Yeah, that's a, that's a really new development <clears throat> because I know specifically when we're at the grocery store and he sees fluorescent lights, yeah. he has been pointing those out. And in fact, when we were at the store, he saw me trying to get a salad off the yeah off the shelf and he was staying back because he was obviously scared of it but was concerned about me and told me that i needed to get away from it and then when i brought the salad he didn't want me to have that i maybe because he felt like that was danger danger from the area and i had to put it back i did i put it back because i didn't want to upset him and then you snuck it off for me which i I appreciate it it. but yeah yeah that's a new um, thing so i think he's being he's gotten to the level where he can start telling us those things where before you know he may be may have a behavior and we're like what is it we can't figure it out well maybe it was the light you know so that's it's you know we we try to like you always say crack the code i know you know so now that he's able to tell us some things we're being able to um see what's going on in his head um, so in addition, he, he says that, um, communication is predicting what people will say. Normally our brains make quick, smart guesses again. So when people are talking to us, we can kind of predict what's coming next based on what the story is about. So not so much in the ASD brain. Um, so he says, slow down your speech pause in between sentences you know so that they can absorb that and catch up add context such as i'm going to ask you about school today so that's preparing them about what you're going to talk about so we don't do that i know well Well, thanks for sharing with me (laughs) that's as i'm sharing with everybody as we go through as i said i have not had time to go through i know okay all right. So you kind of prep them, you know, I'm going to ask you about That's a good idea. Today. So then the follow-up question is, did you use crayon and, crayons and markers in school or, you know, whatever your question yeah. is. So they're in that frame of mind. So that helps them predict what is coming next. 
uh, and it helps them, you know, concentrate on what you're going to talk about. And then also um, we talked about emotions. So showing and labeling faces as different emotions can be a hindrance sometimes. And here's why is because you can mistake. uh, He showed us a picture of two people crying and he said, are these people happy or sad? And everybody answered, well, they're sad because they're crying. And then he showed us the whole picture of the person, not just the head. Well, one person was holding flowers that was just given to them. And the other person was holding a trophy that they just won. So they were actually happy tears. So it's better to, you know, show those types of things with context so that they aren't confused when somebody's crying. Uh, So that's just an example there. Um, And so, and he said, you know, on like when people are going to clap in the beginning of his speech, because there were some people with autism in the room, he gave them options before there was applause. He says, in my speech, there's going to be applause. So, I want to give you this opportunity to, A, you can wear earplugs, B, you can, you know, put your headphones, or or you can leave the room, you know, I'm warning you ahead of time that there will be clapping, if it bothers you that much, then you can leave the room, or you can stay, and so, if the people were going to stay, they knew, you know, if they're bothered by clapping, that it was going to be coming. So I thought that was a great uh, analogy that he expressed there and and showed his concern for, you know, people on the spectrum and and help them predict what's happening next. OK. And I think and if you know it is coming, then, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Like if we're watching the Philadelphia Eagles play football, really, we got to prep Bryce, which we tell right. him we're going to be clapping. Mommy's going to be excited. I might be yeah. jumping up and down. If you don't like it, it's okay. You can go in your room and or sure, you can stay here and cheer with us. I'm sure you remember early on, we took him to one of his nephew's basketball games. Oh, yeah. And the buzzer went yeah. off, which to me, that buzzer is way too loud. Yeah. Like you can hear it in the next city, uh, <laughs> but... Of course, not only was it loud, but it was abrupt. I didn't really know it was coming because I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Right. Well, Bryce certainly didn't know that that even happened during a basketball game, let alone when it was going to happen. So he had a big meltdown. Yeah, that did and, not go over well. Uh, that was that was. And tough. we didn't know when to prep him. But then once I realized that, then I knew when to take him out to yeah. the hallway and to cover his ears. Yes. Because I knew when it was going to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very so good point. that's my tidbit on it. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. Hey, no problem. Yes. So the other highlight for the week, personal space, known as face space, <laughs> uh, <laughs> space invaders, uh, you know, all these different terms we've come across. But really, this is this is a big thing for Bryce right now. He is just now really understanding what it means to have a friend yeah and he's developing um feelings for a couple people that he considers to be his friend people that he's learned to love like he loves us but he hasn't learned what's appropriate behavior with those kind of friends it does again doesn't come naturally to him he gets really happy when he sees his friends he does And, and i think one really prominent misconception with people who don't live in the world of autism is there's a big assumption that all autistic people don't like to be touched or are not affectionate Mm -hmm. and because i've heard that before oh but he's so you know he's so affectionate and he's so happy and he is on his terms if he wants to hug you he will want to hug you it's a spectrum it is a spectrum but i'm just but i've heard a lot of um, he's not alone. I've heard a it lot a of moms speak. Yes. So, yes, there are some that it definitely is a sensory thing and they do not like to be touched at all. I think Bryce, and again, we'll just work with Bryce, but uh, I th- believe with him, 
if he, it was kind of like when you're talking about the predictability, if he knows the hug is coming or he's asking for the hug or he's expecting the hug, he's okay with it. Mm -hmm. But if someone were to approach him and touch him and he wasn't expecting it, not so much. You know what? I kind of feel the same way. If I ain't (laughs) expecting it, not so much, you know, so good for him. But, um, he, what he does to give a visual here is he stands within <laughs> millimeters, millimeters. <laughs> not even inches. And then uh, he makes a noise. Yes. And he has this happy noise. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's I like some happy it. song he sings. Only he can do it. Only he can do it. It's, it is quite annoying, but it's his song of affection. So it's Bryce's love song. And he <laughs> wants to <laughs> sing that to his friends and get, he doesn't touch them. He no. will literally stand like as close to them as possible without touching them, get his head down to their head and then sing his love song yeah. to them. Not cool. You know, no, no, and, not cool. But we're very thankful that the friends that he does that to are I think they're understanding, you know, they move away a little bit, but they it's not like they but push they're still away his friends and we're really happy. Friends, you know, yeah, yeah, they so. are. And I witnessed this for the first time myself <laughs> when we went to the playground with his little best friend and, um, you know, it was like mission accomplished. He's following his little friend around the playground. Everything his friend said, he repeated, you know, because we want him to have this type of interaction so that he can learn conversations and communications all that but then when i saw him over there like you know again right up in his face singing his love song i'm like you you can't do that bryce and then i said to his little friend you know if bryce gets too close to you it's okay you can just say back up dude Mm -hmm. i said and it's okay you won't hurt his feelings you know you just need to let him know because i wouldn't like if he was that close to me either so i was really letting his little friend know and his friend gets it so Mm -hmm. you know and i could tell he was kind of like Mm, this is a little too close. And then when we first got there, Bryce asked him for a hug and they hugged and it was good. Then at that point, Bryce, Bryce just really wanted to hug because we were getting ready to leave. And so then I said, you have to ask for a hug. So he asked for a hug and his little friend said, (laughs) no. (laughs) And I said, that's okay. You can say no. And I said, Bryce, he just doesn't want to hug right now. That's okay. We'll go on down to the car. And then we went down to the car and then his friend got in and he gave him a high five bye. And that was perfect. So, it was good. And then school, the fun, this is one of his school friends. And so his teacher said, I witnessed this for the first time so bad. And I said, well, I saw it Saturday. And it's just because, you know, again, he loves his little friend. So his teacher is wonderful. And she said she, like, had to physically separate him three times, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, But she taught him the term face space and so she told him you know you got to give face space to your friends and Bryce seemed to get that you know and so we're showing him also with our hands like the distance that he should be from his friends Mm -hmm. showing him like how we talk so we're modeling it for him but also giving him key words so like it could be a verbal reminder like face space and Mm -hmm. he knows oh and so I had this mission to um to find some tools to help him. So I went online and I found some personal space social stories. And I also found even a little board game, so to speak, that has all these questions that are, whether it's appropriate or not appropriate for interacting with his friends. And then he gets to move forward or he moves backwards according Mm -hmm. to the answer. I don't know if he's on that level yet. No, I got it because I figured this is going to be a continuing thing Mm -hmm. and we can test where he's at and then it can continue. Right now I'm just starting with the social story. But I thought that was a really cool tool to have available because we also want to do more board games with him because my understanding that's going to help his brain develop and his language develop and our conversations, which is what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, it it has been interesting. And I read, I I went through the social story with him and I was happy to hear from his teacher that he's doing better this week. In fact, he got a clear report yesterday, which was great. And then the, you know, earlier in the week, she said he did it a couple of times, but then he self-corrected and said out loud face space. Like he knew, you know, Mm -hmm. he said he is so smart. He does get the stuff. We just have to present it to him. So I went ahead and I designed uh, a social story, so to speak, on one sheet of paper just for him. And so I went ahead and tied in all of the things that we're trying to teach him right now, which is, you know, how to greet his friend, tell them hi and give a high five and when it's appropriate to hug and not to hug and how to ask permission for that. And so I designed that and I thought 
that's a really cool tool and a resource to have. And so I know we're working on this website that we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. And so we're getting ready to launch it and we wanted to put some tools on there. And one of the one of the features on our website is going to be that resources. We're, yeah, we're gonna have resources that if you log in to become a member, then you'll be able to have these free resources that right. we find to be helpful for us that maybe you'll be find to be helpful and for to you. to become a member is free. So yeah, yeah. Just... It's just logging in and then you'll be able to go and get those things. And that's something we're going to be building upon. So we're really excited about that. You want to say any more about that website? Uh, yeah, www.parentingautismshow, like TV show, but it's a podcast show, parentingautismshow.com. That's because somebody bought parentingautism.com and, and they're, they're sitting on it hoping we'll pay them lots of money and yeah. we're not. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so we went another route. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so you can find that. Uh, hopefully we're going to launch it this coming week. Yeah, I mean, it's live now, so we just uh, we're, st- I think the last thing that we have to do Oh, that's do right. They can is, go on now, uh, right? Yeah, they, we just have to Groovy. put the files onto the site, which will be happening in the next few days. So. Yeah. So yeah, we hope you'll go and check it out and We're going to, it's really going to be as we have things come up with Bryce and we're finding these tools that we're using for him, Mm -hmm. then we want to pay it forward and share them so that maybe somebody else is looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, so we're also expanding to other forms of social media, Twitter, Instagram. Um, so I'm sure you'll see those links on the website if you want to hook up with us there. And also a uh, YouTube channel, which we haven't posted any uh, YouTube videos yet, but we will. Yeah. And then uh, moving from there, I want to talk about uh, testing our drinking water. Go so, for it. Um, one of the things at the Taka conference that we just attended uh, they talked about water and how uh, glyphosate, with, uh, a.k.a. Roundup, is found in a lot of the drinking water. Um, so that's a concern, along with heavy metals and, and whatever else. So uh, we did look at our water report uh, from the water company. And, of course, you know, they add fluoride and chlorine or chloramines into the water to clean it and sanitize it and the fluoride's supposed to be good for us and, and good all for that your teeth. so yeah that's what they that's say. what they say <clears throat> so um they encourage us to do a water test just to see what's really in our drinking water because you know they can test it from the plant and you know have one result and then by the time it gets to your house you know who knows what else is in there so we're in the process of doing that now and i'll expand on that um when we uh submit and get our results but like there's only a few companies that i found online that do that and two of them are not licensed in florida to do the water testing so i'm probably gonna have to use that'll limit your options a, a different one yeah so uh, anyway, and then, you know, some local companies probably do it, but they probably don't test um, for all of the things that we want to test, you know, all the heavy metals and things like that. <clears throat> and then, you know, even if they do test for those things, I mean, they, they probably sell their own water uh, filter thing. So, you know, they want, of course, they want to sell you whatever they provide so i i feel much better about sending a sample off and just getting an independent uh test done like that so that's where we're at on that yeah i think we're just trying to again it's one of those things control what you can control because there's so many things in this world and on this journey that we cannot control but there's some things that we can and that's what are we consuming and i think you and I both have landed on the same page that we're really trying to pay close attention to what we're consuming Mm -hmm. in the way of beverages, in the way of foods, even in the way of chemicals on our skin and in our hair and toothpaste. And, you know, like you use a special tooth powder instead of toothpaste, you know, for you and Bryce. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, just things that 
we just have to pay a little more attention to to see if that will improve quality of health Mm -hmm. um, for all of us. And so dairy was the one thing that when we came back from Taka, I said, you know what, I'm 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 just biting the bullet and I'm doing it. Yeah, I know that for me personally, I have had a lactose intolerant issue as far back as I can remember into high school. Um, it used to be that I would get very severe stomach pains. And um, I had IBS before IBS was cool. I mean, I was diagnosed <laughs> with nobody. There were no commercials. Nobody knew what it was. Right. And I do think a lot of that was dairy related. And, uh, and of course, stress triggered it. But then my body started breaking out with hives and things I couldn't un- understand. And I had eliminated dairy for a short period of time, and I noticed that all my skin cleared up. Mm -hmm. So I knew then that there was a tie, but my love for pizza and good-tasting cheese, and I kind of knew, stay away from the stronger cheeses, mozzarella is a lot less offensive than... Parmesan. Parmesan is a big big offender. Um, Feta cheese, you know, that sort of thing. But it seemed like it was just kind of getting worse and worse, and then when we were at the meeting and... (laughs) I had a milkshake because we were at that <laughs> Shake Shack. And, uh, oh, my goodness, I had hives break out on both of my legs, other areas. I'm like, this this just isn't worth it anymore yeah. to me. And I wish I had gotten a strawberry shake to go out with a bang, but I didn't. <laughs> so I was a little disappointed that I chose a new flavor, but whatever. And then I look at Bryce, and I he's having the same breakouts. But he can't face. tell yeah. me. Right, on his face. Oh, he's had eczema. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and of course he saw you having your chocolate shake, and he, he didn't care yes. for mine. But, you know, he wanted your chocolate shake. And so after we both broke out, I'm like, that's it. You know, Bryce doesn't know to control these things. Mommy does. Right. So we are. So we have made great strides for the past almost three weeks now. And, um, you know, we we changed up his diet. We took, he, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was having pizza every day, but mm-hmm. we've told him the pizza places are closed. And we've yeah. been having meals in. We, we don't eat out as much now, which is a good thing all the way around. We tried one dairy-free frozen pizza. Uh, and yeah, that was a bust. That was a bust, so. and we took it back. And yeah. they thought we were crazy. But, hey, $9 yeah. and change for a pizza that my kid don't like. Yeah. You can take your product back. Yeah. So I was at some, you know, healthy food store place. But he, you know, he's okay without the pizza. And actually, I have found that he seems to be much more open and willing to eating other foods now. He is. Well, I mean, part of the reason is is that we're eating in so much now and we're cooking, uh, you know, healthier foods. So every night when we have dinner... He has his little plate, and, you know, he gets a reward at the end, whether it's a new game on his iPad. Which is, or, we try to go with something that's non-food, and that's yeah. worked well. So, we'll give him, um, and he'll eat <clears throat> a meat of some sort, and then he will eat all his vegetables. Yep. And we did go out to uh, dinner with uh, Grandma Roro last week, yep. and for the first time, we actually got him a meal because I, mean, I say a meal from Longhorn because that's always her treat. And she wants to get him something. We're like, you know, because you'll be donating your money because he's not going to eat it. Mm-hmm. But this time he ate his entire steak and his entire sweet, sweet potato, potato with no gripes whatsoever. And that was a really big deal to us. So I know that it's been good for him. Not only has his face and his skin cleared up completely, but his sniffles have stopped. So I'm hoping that this will help him with his asthma and his eczema as well. Yeah, his nose has completely dried up. Completely. So, wow, what a huge difference. Yeah. So we know dairy was a big offender. Yeah, and then yesterday I had to I had to fast for blood work. So I was driving to work and I thought, I intentionally made the decision, all right, I have my Starbucks gift card. Let me just go through. I can get a chai tea. My, my happiness does lie in Starbucks hot chai tea with um, a slice of the lemon loaf pound cake. But the lemon loaf pound cake does have milk, and I know it. So I have not had it in weeks. So what do you do on the um, chai tea? Because that normally Coconut milk. Oh, coconut milk. Yeah, so you can tell them coconut milk. So I can dodge it there, which is great. 
but I knew I was pushing it with the lemon loaf. So I thought, well, I'm going to try it, right, and see how it is. So I did it, and as I told you, within within the hour, I started getting bumps and hives on my elbow, and then I had another itchy spot, and I'm like, wow, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. Because I have not had this in any dairy at all in weeks. It's so weird because these hives have moved around your body. They like they I know. were on your calves at one point and they were on my legs then, all the time and then, and then, then they sometimes moved sometimes the arm and it's like sometimes it's, it's weird yeah it's, i never know where they're gonna pop right. out <laughs> it's awful it's so when i saw that happen i'm like wow and then um like even my stomach didn't feel right and i felt nauseous all the way through last night and i said and i told you i said that's it that was a good test for me to have i didn't even go big or go home like with a shake or a pizza i just had my lemon loaf pound cake and i don't know how much milk they have in that but it can't be that much but i was like you know what i'm so glad i did that just in the sense that I have to be Bryce's advocate, and he can't tell me how he feels, really, after he has dairy. We only see it when we see it popping out on his skin. Right. He has a high tolerance for pain, so if he does have a stomach ache, I don't know that he would tell us. We wouldn't know, right. Unless it was, like, really terrible. And it's obviously not good for him, so we will definitely stay away from dairy. So <laughs> he bakes cakes all the time on his iPad apps. He He's always enjoyed baking and he likes to do it in the kitchen as well. Of course, he loves the electric mixer. He just loves the whole concept. He knows the ingredients, yeah. the whole nine yards. So the other night out of nowhere, we're in bed and I'm asking him about school and all of a sudden he just starts crying and he's telling me he wants a chocolate cake. <laughs> and this is like, you know, bedtime. He's like, Oh, chocolate cake, yeah. chocolate cake. Actually, he said he wanted cake, and then you ask him what kind. He said he wanted chocolate, and he wanted frosting, and he wanted chocolate, chocolate frosting. frosting. So we had to tell him to calm him. Well, we told him that we would bake a cake tomorrow, but yes, that was not good that was enough. not calming there, him. There was going to be a meltdown. He de- oh, he was already melting. <clears throat> so we said he's all about his calendar. So we said okay. There's no chocolate cakes on Tuesday because the stores are closed and we don't have it. But tomorrow on Wednesday after school, you can have your chocolate cake. But that's still one. Yeah. It wasn't, but we got him to the point that, oh, yeah, you had to. So then Chris uh, uh, Chris offered up. I was in emergency He was. Mode. He says, would you? <laughs> all, I mean, and this is like after a solid 15 minutes of tears. Yes. It was and sad. it's bedtime, you know. We're yeah. all tired. So Chris says, would you like a cookie? He stopped, snapped his head, went, cookie? (laughs) And we had dairy-free cookies in the pantry because we keep those on hand when he has a birthday celebration at a school. He gets to take a dairy-free cookie. So um, so Chris says yes. So you never seen a kid just change so much. So he was happy. We had two left, and he had them both, which was good. He had he had both and turned it around and uh, by the time he was done with the cookies he had forgotten all about the cake and, and well we're... just for the day so yeah, the, the next day, day we knew we game knew on coming. we're gonna have to have a cake for this kid because we told him he could have it when he gets home from his school so Chris had the mission of finding a dairy free chocolate cake and dairy free chocolate icing and you came through you delivered I did. I and went, um, went to the health food store and they. They had the cake mix. I'm like, oh, I know frosting's made with milk. Mm-hmm. I hope they have one. And they had one brand uh, that was dairy free and, and chocolate. Like, Boy, I hope this is good <laughs> for Bryce. It didn't matter if anybody else liked it. Right. I don't personally care for chocolate cake, so it was right. no temptation for me. So he got to make his cake, and I posted this on our Parenting Autism Facebook page because it was so sweet. He was so excited. He got to mix it. We did tell him that this cake mix, like as if we're reading it off the box, this does not use an electric mixer. You have to use the whisk with your hand. Oh, it says it right there. Well, it did. It said he had to use a whisk. There it was. So so. he, he... he pulled through. He got to use his yeah. whisk. He mixed it all. But he asked me when I picked him up from his morning school, bake a cake, bake a cake. I said, yes. I said, it's going to be after your after second school. school. Yeah. yeah. So then, of course, when you picked him up, yes, it was like, it was game on for cake. the cake. We got to bake a cake. And, so we did. We baked his cake. He was so excited. 
and then he um, he was so excited to just decorate it. I mean, like to put the icing on. It was like his. He kept saying, "This is nice. This is a nice cake. Yeah, <laughs> this is a nice cake." <clears throat> so he uh, took a bite and he loved it. And yeah. now he gets a little sliver each day, and it's a great reward for cleaning his plate. If he eats all of his food, which is his meat and his vegetables, then mm-hmm. he gets a sliver of his cake. But, you know, it can be done. So I'm just giving the encouraging words that sometimes it takes a little extra work. Sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. But, you know, if you know something's not good for your child, then we just have to we just have to make it happen. You know, we just really do. And it would be so much easier to just take the easy out, go get him a cupcake and be done with it. Mm -hmm. And um, but we just can't do that. I'm just at this point in life that I can't do that. Well, if you know something is affecting him adversely, it it would be wrong to me. I I would feel convicted about that. (laughs) (laughs) Don't call. What is it? DSF? Whoever comes. Um, yeah, but we really do want to do what's best for him and not what's best for us. Easier said than done, I know, a lot of the times, but it was a parent win, I have to say, a big time. And so that was pretty cool. And uh, that that was a big highlight of the week. And I think everything else has really been par for the course. And yes, we've had some tears. Yes, we've had some little meltdowns, uh, but we're working through them. He's overall had a good week at school. He has improved in the... <laughs> personal space department Mm -hmm. so that's good and actually his little friends coming over in the morning to play on the water slide so we'll see how that we'll see how that goes we'll be able to enforce it exactly for me that's the opportunity and and on that i was going to segue into one more thing so i was thinking about it and we've got summer coming up and you know he's not going to have all the interaction with his friends that he's had like during the school year i want him to have a few more friends. You know, I want him to have a little circle of friends where it's not just mm-hmm. one friend. But I understand that <clears throat> it's not just the friend that has to be on board. It has to be the friend's parents who are on board. Mm-hmm. Because I understand that Bryce can appear to be a little different. And, you know, if I were in the other shoes, I don't know how I would be. You right. know, just like I want the behavior of these friends to rub off on Bryce by influence, they probably have a concern that they don't want Bryce's behaviors that they deem or see as kind of different Mm -hmm. to rub off on their children. So there's no judgment on my part. I totally get it. But I know that we have friends that know us and know Bryce and love him. So I'm going to really put a challenge and an invitation out there for those for friends. all our listeners no 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 because no, you're not all local but <laughs> seriously all, all of our local friends i'm going to put there on facebook yeah. and you know this is good for listeners who maybe are in our same boat i'm going to challenge them and ask them and invite them you know let's teach our kids together and help your children to understand why Bryce is a little bit different, but that he's okay, you know? And help the parents understand, too. And that will help the parents understand, and then the parents and the child, they'll understand, and then, you know, we can get together with them. And I just, it's all about just creating that awareness, And which I thought was wonderful that with the schools around here, because this is Autism Awareness Month, and they had Autism Awareness Week at the local preschools. Mm -hmm. Two of them did, which I think that's great now how much did they explain to the kids i don't know Mm -hmm. did they just see puzzle pieces or was there really some type of education to help them understand why kids are different but you know i i want parents to step up and explain that to their Mm -hmm. kids and so if the parents can teach the children then the children are going to just accept and love Right. The kids are a little bit different. So. Aut- autism is not contagious. So it's not. <laughs> it's not. And 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 it's it's got so many beautiful gifts. And yeah. that's what we want other people to see. That's why we do this show to create that awareness because everybody just doesn't understand it. And there are a lot of people that want to know. So anyway, that's, did we cover everything? I think we hit it all. Time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. So. I would say, uh, again, if you want to go visit our website, we've got that out there. That's, mm-hmm. And I'll put the link in the show notes, but it's www.parentingautismshow.com. Yep. Um, you can reach us by emails if you want. That's parentingautism at att.net. Yep. And then we have our Facebook page, which is just Parenting Autism. Mm-hmm. You'll see the link for the Instagram 
I don't know who's going to tweet. I'm actually going to defer to Chris for all that because I, oh, no. I ain't got no time for that, <laughs> for all that social media. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. We're getting, you know, we're just trying to create that awareness. So we hope if you're listening, um, you'll reach out to us with any questions you have, with anything that you might want to hear us talk about. Again, we try to stay on track with what's going on in our world, but we're certainly open to other questions you may have. I know I had someone call me yesterday um, because – they're having some issues with their two-year-old and it's got some delayed language and some behavior issues and where do they go? And I was able to refer her to our early steps program that they have here for the state of Florida. You know, I want to be able to pay it forward because we've received so much these past three years. So oh. anyone that wants to reach out to me, we're here. Yeah. And I also want to give a shout out to Lexi who left us a review on iTunes. She says, I love this podcast. Sandy's voice is so soothing to listen to. Oh, thank you. Very informative and a great all-around podcast. So we thank you, Lexi, for leaving us that review. And I think that review helped us pop up on the search results now. Yay! So we're thank getting you, there. Thank you. Uh, but more reviews will help us uh, show up higher. I don't know. Yeah, but, that's if somebody's searching. And then, yeah. you know, we're hoping that as people find us, even on Facebook, that they'll tag friends or share it on their walls so that someone who's been touched by autism or someone that just wants to learn more that they'll yeah. tune in and follow along especially our last episode on depression that seems to be hitting a lot of bells uh so if if you or you know someone you know is going through that uh our last episode would be helpful for them so on that note we want to wrap it up and say have a great day and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Yep, we'll see you next time. Bye.